What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to another question dealing with quadrilaterals. So we are given this quadrilateral here with vertices A, negative five, negative one, B, two and three, C, 14 and four, and then D, zero, negative four. And we have to verify that it's a trapezoid. So just as a quick review, what is a trapezoid by definition? You may see actually different definitions come up. The way I like to think of it, it's basically a quadrilateral that has one pair of parallel sides. Okay, just one pair of parallel sides. And then the other two sides are not parallel. So you would have two parallel sides and then these two other sides, wherever they are, they could be maybe like even like this for example, right? This side and this side are not parallel. This side and this side are parallel. So that would be a trapezoid, for example. And you can make an infinite amount of shapes where you have two parallel sides and then two non-parallel sides. And so really all we have to do is find the slope of each side so we got A, B, C, D, so we would find the slope of A, B, B, C, et cetera, et cetera. And then if two of the sides are parallel, only two sides are parallel, then the other two sides are not parallel, right? They don't have the same slopes. Then we verify that it's a trapezoid. And that's all we have to do. So we're just gonna be using the slope formula a bunch of times. So it just says a review, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's first find the slope of AB, of side AB, and let's actually put some points here. Uh, I don't wanna label the, let's just put A, B, C, and D, just so we could have something to refer to. So notice in this diagram, you could kind of see that AD, BC are parallel, but that's not necessarily going to happen here. I'm just kind of plotting the points so we know we're dealing with line AB, BC, CD, and then AD, right? It may very well be that when we calculate this, AB and CD are going to be parallel. Then we'll have to adjust the diagram. I just kind of want to label these points uh, in order. So we're going to go A, B, B, C, C, D, and then A, D. So the slope of A, B, so let's label this X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So we'll have Y2, which is 3, minus Y1, which is negative 1. Be careful with the brackets there. X2, which is 2, minus X1, which is negative 5, like that. So this would end up being 3 plus 1, which would give us 4. Then we'll have 2 plus 5, which is seven. So let's keep track of these. So the slope of AB is positive four over seven. Uh, let's do a quick check here. Yeah, it looks good to me. So four over seven is the slope of AB. Now let's find the slope of BC. So notice that B we already have labeled as X2, Y2, so I'll label C as X1, Y1. So we would end up with Y2, 3 minus 4 over X2, 2 minus X1, which is 14, negative 1 over negative 12, which gives us 1 over 12, like that. All right, so that's the slope of BC. So A, B, and then we got B, C, which would be one over 12. So those aren't parallel. And that makes sense because they're gonna be these two lengths, right? They're attaching or they're connecting at this B value, right? So it's either gonna be A, B, and C, D that are gonna be parallel or B, C, and A, D that are gonna be parallel. So next would be what, C, D, right, we're finding this. So we got C, which is labeled as X1, Y1. Let's label D as X2, Y2. So we'll have negative four minus four 
over x2, which is 0, minus x1, which is 14. This would be negative 8 over negative 14, which would simplify to, notice the negatives make a positive, so this would simplify to 4 over 7. So that's the slope of CD. So notice actually CD and AB are parallel, right? They have the same slope. Okay, so this diagram was actually incorrect, right? The two parallel lines are going to be um, AB and CD. Okay, so we'll adjust that in a second. And without the lengths, we won't even be able to draw as, um, as exact of a diagram. But we know that A, B, and C, D are the two bases. But we also have to verify that the side B, C, and A, D are going to be non-parallel sides. So those have to have different slopes. So we're dealing with A, D now. So we got D, we have A. So those are all already labeled correctly. So we got y2, which is negative 4, minus y1, which is negative 1, over x2, minus negative 5, like that. Right? So we would end up with negative 4 plus 1 over 0 plus 5, which would give us negative 3 over positive 5. That doesn't simplify any further. And so AD would the slope of it would be negative 3 over 5. And so notice that these two sides, BC and AD, are non-parallel. And then we have one pair of parallel sides, which is the AB and then the CD. Both of those have slopes of 4 over 7. And then if you want to graph this, perhaps in a little bit more detail, you can graph it on a Cartesian plane. And a lot of times I actually recommend graphing it ahead of time, especially if you have to do it within the question anyway, because then you can kind of see from the diagram which sides you're going to be aiming to be the parallel sides. Notice that in this case we didn't graph it, so we didn't really know, right? But if you do graph this, so like negative 5, negative 1, if we graph this roughly, so let's say that's going to be like over here, so this is going to be A, then we'll have B, which is at 2 and 3. So let's say 2 and 3 is like here. So that's going to be B. Then we'll have C, which is at 14. So 14 would be like down here. And then 4 would be like up here, let's say. Like that. And then we'll have D, which is at 0 and negative 4. Let's say that that's going to be like down over here. So sorry, this is C. And then that's D. So if we join these... you'd end up getting something like that, right? And you could kind of tell from the diagram that this and this side are the ones that should be parallel, right? And notice we got that AB and then CD are the parallel sides, right? And they have positive slopes. You could also tell, which is nice from the diagrams, you could tell which slope should be positive, which should be negative. Notice we have a positive slope, positive slope, positive, positive, BC, positive, and then notice that AD is negative, as expected. All right, so drawing it on a graph initially does, uh, does help, and it allows you to sort of check your calculations as you go along.